Pops. This isn't your first time working with Kevin, is it? No, it's my second time. We second, almost third, because we we were supposed to shoot a TV show, uh, Last Panthers, that uh, uh, Johan Rank eventually shot. But yeah, we met t- ten years ago in uh, in the Eagle, and uh, yeah, it's the second time. Yeah. Now, what was it about working with Kevin that kind of stuck with you that made you at least consider this new opportunity? Uh, I, I, you know, it, it didn't took me much time to say yes uh, because of the material, the script, uh, the part, uh, the fact that it's a true story and uh, the importance of this movie, the, the fact that the story needs to be told. But with Kevin, uh, I um, when I first worked with him, uh, his uh, ability to 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 give directions, to talk to actors, to to uh, care for them, to listen to every suggestions, is it's a it's a it's a present for an actor because you don't feel uh, shy to ask something, to say something. So you get more self confident, and as you get more self confident, you can try different things and be not be afraid to make mistakes or improve yourself. And uh, Kevin is also a great documentary director. So he knows what's, uh, what's a genuine feeling, what's a real person. Uh, because people in documentaries, they don't play, obviously. So uh, I knew that the man in front of me would recognize when, uh, when, when I would, in a way, touch the truth. So I felt, uh, and I trust him 100%. Which is and very imagine, important for an actor. And I imagine that trust plays into what's, I imagine, out there in the Hollywood lexicon, the, the, the propensity of screenwriters to write roles that are stereotypical um, and throw them to someone who happens to be from that area of the world or et cetera. And I, 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 I imagine you've dealt with that over your career from time to time. Of course, I had to turn down some uh, parts from Hollywood, from Europe, because of uh, what you just mentioned. Uh, I didn't want to be part of those movies or uh, um, or uh, uh, play those parts because uh, I don't share the same. You know, I don't want. I want to make movies that I want to see, and uh, I'm an actor, and I want to pick good parts. So uh, the the stereotypical parts, whether it's for uh, uh, Middle Eastern uh, um, characters or sometimes French characters. Uh, I don't like that. It's not coherent with my uh, acting path. But in this case, it was so new. It's so rare to see people with this background, with this uh, uh, um, history being depicted this way. It's It's simple. When you read the script, you can take the character and put it in another context, it's a beautiful part. Human with feelings, uh, with doubts, uh, with different layers, someone you can uh, connect with and uh, identify with. We didn't want to victimize them. What we wanted to do is to to just show someone uh, who's been uh, wrongly accused, no charge, uh, with no charge, and tortured in, in a system that is uh, uh, awful. But if you take it and put it in another context, in another era, period, the movie would work. And uh, yeah, that makes sometimes, it so uh, special as well. Yeah, so sometimes context is everything. How did he present the part to you, How, the, the script? Uh, was it just a phone call? Did you, did he, was it an email? I mean, because this, this is a pretty text. big, <laughs> was it a text? You know, Kevin. He said, hey, Tahar, how are you? Uh, I might have a beautiful part for you. Call me back. <laughs> that was Four it. Lines. <laughs> yeah. So I called him. He started to pitch me the thing. And I'm like, okay, send it in. And uh, as we're talking about it, at that time, the title was uh, Guantanamo Diary. Oh, so by, it was by, like... By the book. That's the, the, yeah, the title of the book. Based on the book. But I never heard, never heard about this story or Mohammedu before. So all I see is my, uh, the preconceived idea that I have, Guantanamo diary. So I'm like, okay, they want me to play terrorist. And um, instantly I thought of Kevin, I know him and I, I'm like, no, Kevin, uh, it's never gonna offer me those type of parts. He knows me. 
and he's too clever to do this. So I read the script and uh, when I closed it, I called him and I said, man, I'm in. I really want to do it. Well, simple as that. And I guess my, my next question is your preparation and to what lengths did you go to get into that mindset for this incredibly important role? As far as possible. <clears throat> as far as possible. If you are going to convey uh, authentic emotions to the audience in this specific part, you need to experience it. I needed to get a feel, especially with the torture scenes. But we talk a lot about torture, uh, the torture scenes. Let's talk about it, but it's, it's not the only thing. Uh, I had, yeah, I wanted them to shackle me for real, to turn the cell as cold as possible. And I went so far in my head that, uh, that the aircon was so low that it was not cold enough. So I called my, uh, uh, the makeup artist and I said, spray my body with water. I need to feel it more. We did that. I was waterboard for real. Um, the forced feeding as well. I lost 10 kilos. I would eat like, I don't know, two hard boiled eggs in the morning at lunch and at dinner. That brought me to, uh, that made my, 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 my soul and my body fly to some places that are, I was like discovering an emotional state that I never expected. And it, it is so strong that your emotions leads you and your performance to a place that feels like truth. And I needed it. And as far as I was going, Kevin got started to get worried. So he came to me like, hey man, stop, we got it. You know, uh, he, and I was like, yeah, but don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I'm not gonna hurt myself, but I need to go there. Now it was, uh, it was personal and it's crazy. You know, sometimes, sometimes it feels good to suffer when you're an actor because you feel that you're you're almost touching the truth and that's what that's what i seek when i'm acting and it doesn't really happen all the time you see i i don't know if you see my reaction or my face when you were telling me that I, i'm completely stunned i mean did you feel that it, you would be doing a disservice if you didn't get close enough to the truth so that the right story was being conveyed or were you just in the moment? Both. I started uh, by thinking of my responsibility to Mohamedou, to my director, uh, to the audience, but yeah, to Mohamedou first. And at some point, yeah, I was, uh, I went so far in one scene uh, about the hallucination when he sees his uh, mom in the cell and he started to get crazy. I don't know what it is. I never took drug. Uh, I never had a flu that makes me hallucinate. So I don't know what it is. Uh, and I went so far. We shot that uh, second to last day of shooting. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's almost as if I, uh, as if I, as if I saw my own mo mother in the cell. Really? And I said, Kevin, I can do it once. I was exhausted, it was the end of the shooting. And uh, I don't know where I flew, but I was somewhere else. And then I collapsed. I couldn't do anything else, but just lay down. Yeah, that was a strange moment. If I was talking to you on the set when you were filming, would I have been talking to you in between takes or someone else? It's very hard to say. Uh, no, it's me. Of course it's me. It's always us. I mean, otherwise you're uh, schizophrenic. It's always you, but you talking through another, uh, no, it's uh, someone else talking in your body, in your spirit, in your soul. So it's still you, but it's you trying to be in the moment, to live something and to believe so deeply in it that, uh, that it's uh, almost you living the situation and, and uh, having the same life of, of your character. It's strange, but uh, when I talk to you, I feel like I wanna play, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, it's so exciting. That's what we're trying to find each time you, you, you pick a part.
do you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump off, go from that jumping point because a question has popped in my head. Do you feel like people who come from a different background, different socioeconomic setting, however you want to frame it, can learn about the experiences that people uh, from, from uh, that, that are generally persecuted by their by their appearance, perhaps they haven't done anything wrong. Do you think that we can learn by seeing what you were put through and all in the name of a perceived wrong that didn't even really happen? Uh, I hope so. I hope you can learn uh, things from uh, others' testimony, whether it's a movie, a book, or uh, just a moment you share with someone uh, and drinking a coffee. I hope so. That's why we like to bond with people, and that's why it's so important to look, to 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 look after the people you love, to 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 understand others, to try to not, you know, you know, to learn more about others is to 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 take lessons for you, for yourself, and in the case of Mohammedu, uh, you know, I asked him at some point, uh, "Were you angry?" I mean, he said, "Yes, I was angry." I but be. I, what, uh, yeah, and I, I think I, uh, me, think that uh, it's a question of surviving, and 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 that developed something into Muhammadu's mind and spirit that is extraordinary. He turned anger into forgiveness. How he does that? He said, when you do this, when you forgive people that uh, did such bad things to you, uh, you give a treat to yourself. So you free your mind from so many. Uh, so many barriers. So it was like he could be free, whether he was, uh, even if he was uh, stuck in a little metal box. And plus he added something, when you don't hold grudges against anybody, you might have the power to change people, people's mind. That's great. When you I'm think about it, it's such a beautiful philosophy. I'm blown. I'm blown away. Uh, blown away by this conversation. About blown away by that philosophy. And I, my final question: When you were done filming and, and put yourself through all of this, you obviously went home to the family. Hmm. Were you the same? Were you different? How long did it take to get back to the same? Are you even the same person you were before that you filmed this? Look, uh, no, no. Usually, it's it's harder for me to get into my parts than to get out of my parts. This time, it, the first time in my life, it took me three weeks to get away from uh, from my character. It never happened to me before. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why, but uh, I, I remember talking to my friends and my family, and they'd, they'd say, uh, 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 you're so different, and tell us what happened there. Uh, right? You just just uh, let's talk about it, as you usually do. And I couldn't. I said, I can't tell you what happened over there. You, you, you should have been there. And uh, it took me three weeks. It was so strange, so strange. But uh, then I went back to, 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 to myself and to my life, uh, fortunately. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, what I kept with me is, uh, is, is this philosophy, trying to take this direction, you know. Because I came, uh, I came to realize that when you are angry against somebody, or uh, you know, uh, you wrap your head up, you think about it, and you lose lifetime, you lose energy, and you are the only one living this. Because usually the others, they go on, they keep going, and you are sitting in your sofa pretending to be, uh, you know, cool, but thinking about it, you know, it's like it's like a cancer. So I'm trying to, to behave like this.